Howdy, it's Matt, and in this episode, it's the quick version to the overview for the pin collections for the Omnibus F4V1 flight controller. And when I say it's the quick version, my personal target is to do this in five minutes or less, so the pace is going to be quick, pretty quick. So if you would like a deeper, more um, comprehensive overview to this, flight to this flight control board and setting it up for iNav, then I've got a separate episode and you can find that over on my YouTube channel. But this one is the quick one. So with that said, let's jump straight in. So this is the flight control board. We're looking at it from the top of the board. And the major thing which you need to know is, and if I can click on there, is forwards is that way. So the pin headers on the right hand side of the screen, those are the front of the board. So that's the, the you need to put that board pointing forwards on the front of your model. Now on the right hand side of the board, we've got S bus. That's where we put our S bus connector in. So and again, I just need to make sure the orientation is correct for you. The outside road is ground. The inner row is five volts. And then these pins here, including those two little ones down there, are all the signal pins. So the first pin header on the right hand side is for your S bus. So that's where you connect up your receiver using either S bus or PPM connection. Then we've got PWM one, two, three, and four, and then we've got five and six hiding down the bottom. But which ones do you connect up to your servos and your ESC on your model? Well, that's the thing is that it's really straightforward it's because iNav tells you. If I bring iNav onto the screen, you will then see that we've got a picture of a flying wing here. So one and two are for your motors. Now most uh, flying wings only have one motor on them, so we would connect up our ESC to that pin there, which is PWM1. Also for our left elevon and our right elevon, they would go to PWM puts three, or sorry, PWM outputs three and four. Let me just move that back to the screen so we can see the board. PWM3 and PWM4. If you're using a traditional fixed wing model, then you will want to take a look at aeroplane and you'll see that the pinouts are slightly different. That's covered in the full version. Now, there is an important note here around the power supply. I will get to that in just a few moments time, but just be aware there are two different ways which you can power this board. Uh, one is easier than the other. So just think uh, for now, when you connect your ESC, is that that could be providing five volts for the board. Look out for that note in a few moments. Now, when it comes to FPV, it's really straightforward. You have video in coming into this top pin up here. So that's the yellow wire from your FPV camera. It goes into the board there. And then you have uh, video out, which then is to take another yellow wire and it goes onto your video transmitter. That's how the flight controller board is able to add the on-screen display. We have video coming in, it goes into the board. The board then adds the on-screen display, your horizon bars and whatever else you put on your on-screen display. And then it spits it back out on, that, uh, on the inner pin, which is that one there. And that's the pin or the wire which you then take on to your video transmitter. Now there is one little note here, which we need to take a note of, is a common ground. Your video transmitter, there and your FPV camera, they all need to come back to a common ground, whether that's the ground pins there or the ground pins there or the ground pin or the ground pin there. Okay, you just need to be aware of that. You do need a common ground uh, on your FPV system. Now, when it comes to wiring up your GPS unit, you have ground and then five volts. That's the two pins which you connect on. I'll show you how to do that in a later episode. And the other two pins which you need to know about are these bottom two pins, which are TX6 and RX6. That's where you connect your GPS unit in so that you're able to receive your GPS signals from your flight controller. Now, the last topic which we've got, and I've just can see that I've just been in a hit four minutes. Like I said, I was going to keep this one really quick, is that there's a special note around wiring, and I cover this in much more detail in the full version, which is simply you've got two options as far as it goes to as far as it, as it goes for powering your flight control board. If you would like the easy life, and that's the route which I would personally suggest for you, is that your ESC, assuming that it has a free amp or more back uh, built in, is that I would suggest that you power your flight controller board using that connector because that keeps things nice and simple. However, you can power this board using these two pins here, ground 
that one there. So the third one down on the left hand side, on the outermost side, is ground, and then you've got the third one in, and then the second one across as a VBAT. You can power your board using the uh, flight controller battery up to a 4S battery, but just please do go really careful because that there is a F1 flight control board, the board which we're discussing here. I wired it correctly and I completely burnt it out. So you need to go very careful with that one. If you would like the easy life, then I would suggest that you power your board using your ESC. If you would like to see the packed voltage, uh, you can put mains power, look, put full battery voltage into those two pins there. And I'm just gonna quickly recap those again. Is, let me just click on there. Ground onto that pin and then five volts, uh, uh, sorry, your main pack voltage onto the second one in, which is VBAT, okay? Now, that does work. If you're gonna do that, you must remember that on your ESC, if it does have a BEC built in that you'll want to fold that to unpin, the, the red wire, pull it out, and then fold it back so you don't get five volts from the flight control board and five volts from the back trying to compete with each other. That's never gonna end particularly well. So it's, a, it's, an, either, it's, it's an either option, not an and option. So you either power the board and your servos using the flight controller uh, use, um, from the V battery or you use your ESC. Technically, there is a third option which you could use an external back to power the positive wire for all your servos, but then that's gonna take us, take us off quickly, off topic very quickly. So there you go, that's the quick overview to the Omnify, uh, Omnibus F4 flight controller V1 chip. I've kept this as quick as I can. Unfortunately, I failed at my four minute target, but we've done this in seven minutes or less. So on that note, from myself, Matt, Cheerios. Oh, by the way, before you go, if you've got any questions, please ask in the comment section underneath this video. Also, if you do have further questions, go and check the full blown version as the overview for this episode, because I cover things in an awful lot more depth than what I just did in this video. I just wanted to cram everything in. So for those of you which have got a background to the flight controllers, this will get you off to speed as quickly as possible. So I really am going now. For myself, Matt, ta-da!